So, you have ventured in the forest, eager to explore. And now the winding fairy path shall guide you to my door. This magic was a trouble three decades in the making. Already set fully charged to get your phantom quaking. So, fly, fools, and come hither to discover, meet, and play. Your hero is approaching just mere seconds away. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Katie Young. Oh my god, so well. Everyone's treating me really well. I'm so happy to be here again. Um, I was here three years ago um, in Brussels, not Ghent. Um, and it's where I met my partner. Wow. And, um, and since we've had a baby. Wow. So thank you, Belgium. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I brought him with me, not to the convention, but um, he's in the hotel right now. And he's having such a great time. Really? Um, so I think he knows, like, yeah. <laughs> so Belgium will always have a soft spot for you. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. So, first question. Hi. Hi, my name is Joy. Um, okay. Welcome to Belgium. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, if you had a time turner, which scene would you do again? And which line would you do again? Which scene? Um... Oh god, it's it's always like the case with an actor, like we always watch ourselves back on screen and then we think, oh I could have done that better, so if I could choose, I'd choose all of them, but I think um, for me, I'm trying to think the one that I regret the most <laughs> doing, probably the... Probably the kissing scene, or maybe, or maybe the first time we see Cho on the steps when she's coming down. I remember making a really bad decision about my hair uh, because I was so nervous. It was my first day on set, and um, the director asked me how I wanted my hair. I was just, was just I, I was completely thrown because I wasn't expecting this question. So then I was like, uh, just. Um, maybe some strands at the front and yeah it just looked awful on screen it's just I had all this hair over my face you can even see it um, so yeah I'd probably do that scene again and which line from Arcane is your favourite? <gasps> which line? Um, oh that's a hard one because I, I feel like I really enjoy all the scenes between um, Vi and Caitlin and like the moments they have, that the most precious moments are the ones where they don't say anything to each other. Um, but if I had to choose a line, probably when Vi calls her cupcake and she says, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cute moment. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, so I'm a very proud Ravenclaw as well, and my my Patronus is also a swan. Oh, nice. But I was wondering what your uh, Patronus would be in real life. Oh, um, I want to say wolf, like a wolf, because my, my baby's name, his name is Wolf. Um, and it's a really strong, kind of powerful animal. But realistically, I feel like it would be a rabbit or a hare, you know, like Luna's. Because I think for the longest time when I, uh, when I was in the movies and, and I, I remember thinking that Cho was a rabbit. I think because my, my Chinese horoscope is a rabbit too. So I, I kept like mistake, I kept forgetting she was a, her Patronus was a swan. And I kept thinking, oh no, it's a rabbit, it's a rabbit. And then I was like, oh god, it's not, it's a swan. So I think, I think a rabbit. Okay, thank you so Thanks. much. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Amelia, and uh, my question is, what was your reaction uh, when you got the role Cho Chang? Um, I couldn't believe it. 
I was in total shock. Um, I think I went into, I auditioned not thinking that I was going to get the part. So for me, and it's probably partly the reason why I got it, because I was able just to have fun when I was auditioning, because I was like, there's thousands of people who have auditioned, I'm definitely not going to get this part, so I might as well have fun. And I think as an actor, like, you're always encouraged to have fun, um, because that's when you come up with like really original ideas on how you want to play a line or a scene. Um, so, yeah, I think back to your question, I I was just really surprised. And of course, really happy. Um, but it took a long time to sink in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. What do you think Gate and Spotify playlist looks like? Oh God, it's I I don't think she would want to show anyone what's on her playlist. But if she had to show, if she had to, it would be like nineties R and B, nineties R and B. I'm literally I'm just listing the stuff that I listen to. <laughs> but yeah, nineties R and B, a bit of rock, a bit of grunge. Um, I'm thinking of TLC. I think she would love a bit of TLC. Um, maybe some Dr. Dre. Uh, maybe Linkin Park. Yeah, a bit of, yeah. <laughs> bit of everything. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi there. Hi. Um, when you did the uh, voice acting... A little closer to the mic. Yeah. Uh, when you did the voice acting, did you have any props or uh, cosplay items that you could use? And, no. And would it have been more fun to have them? Like... Um, I think it would have been helpful to have like something I could hold on to. Because there are certain moments when Caitlin, you know when she's fighting. Okay, I'm giving stuff away now. But um, when she's um, maybe in, in action, whether she's running or she's fighting or, or just like breathing heavily or trying to climb out of something. I think it's always helpful to be able to grab onto something. But there's nothing that you can't because then they're afraid that you might make extra background noise. So everything has to be like in the air. Um, so that can be quite difficult. So I would have liked to have some props for sure. Um, but it, there's only ever like a glass of water, like the pages with your lines on it, and then the microphone. And also you're not allowed to move too far from the microphone or be too close. You have to like stand in a certain spot. Even when you're running, you have to just be like, <laughs> and just pretend that you're out of breath. So I'd say it's quite um, quite a skill. Like it's, it's definitely not easy to do voice acting, but it's so much fun when you get a hang of it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, hey, bye. Hi. <laughs> um, my uh, girlfriend's in the back likes to know um, if you could change which character from our arcade to voice line, which would it be? Oh, interesting. Um, I don't think I'd be able to do it well. But Ambessa, she is such a cool character. She's just this really formidable force. Um, I'd love to one day be able to play that kind of character because I feel like my voice at the moment is, you know, quite soft. I mean, I can put on the um, a more uh, assertive character if I wish, but it's with a lot of effort um, and a lot of takes, but to be able to kind of play a character like Ambessa is, would be really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, would you say that you in real life would fit in the house of Ravenclaw? I would like to think so. Um, 
Although I've taken the test twice now and I'm still Gryffindor. Shame. But yes, I will I'll be sneaking in there even if, if I'm not allowed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, what is your favorite Disney movie? Ooh. Moana. <laughs> Moana, I love Moana. Um, actually, all the, there's a lot of uh, recent ones that I've fallen in love with. Moana, um, Coco. Oh, it's, like just made me cry so much. I just watched that one scene. <laughs> I just like with the grandmother, right? Yes. Yeah, so Amazing. Cute. <laughs> yeah. So, well, anything makes me cry nowadays. I want to have a baby. Just like, <laughs> just emotional all the time. Aging hormones. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if, if we're talking about classic Disney, then uh, I think Toy Story 3, Toy Story 3 actually, I didn't think it, you know, it's always hard to kind of beat the first one, but 3 I remember watching with my 3D glasses on at the cinema with my siblings. And you know the, the scene where they're all like holding hands about to go into the fire? Um, I was, yeah, I cried so hard, but I, you know, I remember hiding behind the glasses, just kind of like wiping my eyes and not, you know, trying to, yeah, trying to hide that from my, my siblings because they, they weren't crying. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that movie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. First of all, congratulations, and it's a beautiful name, Wolf. Thank you. Uh, how old is He's five months. Oh, five months. Okay, so because I was going to ask a question, but he's too young. Whether you would already think in what house he would be, or <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's too young. Like, oh no, sorry. I haven't thought about that. Um, I think Slytherin springs to mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ambitious. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Partly because he's quite skeptical. So when he meets like a new person or he's in a new environment, he's always, he's very curious and he looks around and people see him as being judgmental, but I don't think so. I think he's just curious, but he's definitely, he's not like friendly from, from the get go. He has to kind of get to know you, suss you out. Gosh. Yeah, and he squeals like a cat. Ooh. So I've named him Wolf, but he squeals like a little kitten. So it's really cute, but I'm also like, come on, Wolf. <laughs> How to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I can ask another question. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sorry. I, I've asked this question several times at a convention, so I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance. No, but if you could ask yourself a question in conventions or in interviews, what question would you ask yourself and what would the answer be? Um, yeah, somebody was going to ask me this yesterday, and, and no, but they, they didn't end up asking me, and I remember thinking like, oh God, I've had time to think about it now, and I think because I've just recently become a mother, uh, I guess I'd like, I'd like to be asked like what it's like to be a mom, um, and I think it's it's such a wonderful experience. Um, and this is not a but, it's an and. So being a mother is wonderful and I'm very grateful to, to be in this role. And also it's very hard. It's very, very, very hard. Um, and I think people don't talk about it enough. Uh, this new identity that you take on. Um, and you can feel both things. You can feel absolute joy and excitement and also fear and anxiety at the same time, like two extremes. Um, it's very, it's a very strange new feeling um, that I'm trying to embrace. Um, yeah. But thank you for talking about the other side because no. I think it's also true that not enough is talked about yeah. how hard it can be and you're questioning yourself and you're probably screwed. I'm not a mom, but I'm just... I Absolutely. Yes, yes. No, it's, it's really... 
yeah, I, I love it. I love it, and I sometimes hate it at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi. So my question is, if you didn't get the role for Cho Chang, which character would you have liked to play? Uh, um, I always say a different character each time because there are so many great characters, obviously. I said, so someone asked this yesterday and I said Snape. Snape would be a really great character to play and also Bellatrix because she's so fun and evil. And um, I, think, I think playing Luna actually would be a real learning curve as an actor and also as a just a human being because she uh, her personality really encourages you to be yourself no matter how strange or weird people think you are it's it's being able to not really care too much about what people think of you and, and changing who you are because of because of what others think and I think it's a really it would be a wonderful character and person to be. It'd be very freeing. Yeah. Okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So, um, I was wondering, instead of asking something about your accomplishments in the past as an actress, I was wondering for the future. What would you really want to do, but you haven't been able to do yet? Um, so, when I was at drama school, several people would say to me, and I would take this as like a real compliment, they would say, you, you look like the unlikely survivor of a, an apocalypse, of a zombie apocalypse. And some people would maybe be offended by this, but several people have said this to me, and ever since, I feel like it would be a goal of mine to be in an apocalyptic themed show or a movie and to be the last survivor. It's very specific, <laughs> but I'm hopeful. Um, so yeah. Well, you've got my support and if that comes true, I'll be certain to watch it. Thank you so much. Thanks. And um, during the making of the Harry Potter movies, what was your favorite moment backstage? Um, my favorite moment? Um, backstage, I think it was just being able to spend time with the cast and having fun as teenagers doing what teenagers do and just kind of, I don't know, hanging out and gossiping and chatting. It was kind of, it was kind of just like being at school, except you got paid and um, you had a really good time um, and you didn't really do so much work in class. There was, so actually the best thing about it was not, <laughs> not doing the work <laughs> that you would do at school because I really hated being in high school. I was never a fan so when they told me I had to move to London to shoot the movies, I was like, yes. Um, and so once I was there, they of course wanted me to keep going to classes, but there was never really much discipline. Um, there wasn't anyone to tell me like, if you don't go to you know class now, then we're going to punish you. There was none of that, so it felt good. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Hi. A couple of questions. Sure. First of all, what was your most challenging um, experience as a, a young actress? And second of all, what advice would you give to young people looking to get into the entertainment business? Um, I think the most challenging thing as a young actress is that you are, you're growing up, you know, in the limelight, well I did anyway, and at the time I think I just felt, like I, I didn't know who I was, I think I was still discovering who I was, what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be, and and I remember as well with the internet becoming such a huge part of it, you know, it was still a 
it was increasingly becoming a bigger part of people's lives. And I remember being so concerned about how and what people thought of me when I was cast as Cho Chang. Um, and that was the worst thing that I could have done, you know, gone online to, to, to see how people viewed me. Um, whether, it, whether they said nice things or bad things, you know, you should never feel like, you should never validate yourself through what people say about you. Um, but unfortunately that was, um, that was how it was because, you know, I, I wasn't sure who I was, so I was looking to other people to tell me. Um, and so I think that, that was really difficult um, growing up in the limelight. But having done it now for a long time, I think my advice would just be to just really believe in yourself and like the kind of path that you've chosen and like what you want to do and you have to persevere. You can't, you can't just give up because it's, it is a really difficult industry to get into. There's so many, it's so oversubscribed, like everybody wants to, to, to do it. Um, and I think if you if you are passionate enough and you're doing it for the right reasons, um, then then you'll get there eventually. So. Thank you. So social media is a, a very big part of basically the entertainment industry. So how would how do you recommend young people cope with that going forward? Mm. I mean, you you obviously struggled with that with yeah. the positive and the negative side. Yeah. How would you? Like I said, to young people looking to get into the entertainment business, how um, do you recommend that they deal with it? Obviously, they have to get involved in it, promoting um, themselves. But how do they, I would say, stand objectively away from that? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, you you know you have a choice of who you want to follow on your social media, like what you want to see. Um, for me. I, I just look at videos of food. Food and dogs and babies now. And they bring me so much joy and happiness and positivity. And that's really all you need. Um, so, I mean, some people look to, to social media because actually they feel less alone and they're, they're able to relate to, to other people who are talking about similar kind of problems that they have and, and that's really wonderful so you know yeah I would encourage just kind of being able to yeah not spend too much time on social media but you know again like I said it's 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 also your choice who you follow what you see at the end um, and you know there's kind of buttons to kind of click away or block all the negativity and um, yeah, just just staying mindful, meditation as well, eating well, sleeping well, not looking at your phone when you're <laughs> when you're trying to sleep. Says me, who <laughs> does it every night. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Hi. Hi. Uh, how did you learn about the audition? My dad was watching TV. And he, it was, it was the Chinese news he was watching at the time. And every evening after the, the news has been broadcast, they have like a little bulletin board of things that are happening within the community in Britain for Chinese people. Um, and it was just that particular evening uh, on this bulletin board, they were saying they were casting the role of Cho Chang in London at Pineapple Studios. It was an open edition, anybody could attend. So if you were 16 and you looked Asian, then you should go and give it a try. So that's, so my dad saw this on the TV and then he came running to the dining room uh, where I was doing my art homework. And he was like, hey Dave, there's this, um, audition happening in London for this role that they were trying to cast in the Harry Potter movies. Would you like to go to London? And I said, don't be ridiculous, Dad. And then he was like, well, it's on a Saturday. You're not, you're not at school and I'm off work. It's my only day off work. So why don't I take a trip down and um, 
Bond. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, so then we, yeah, we went to London and we queued for a long time and through a series of workshops and additions, I, you know, they kind of, yeah, it, the, the, the number of people who were who were up for for the role became smaller and smaller, and eventually I was asked to go to Leaveston Studios, where they filmed the where they filmed the movies, and they they took me into Gryffindor common room to do a screen test with the director and the producers. And I remember meeting Rupert and Dan there, and I was like, oh my god, I'm in the Gryffindor common room. Um, I've just met Harry and Ron. And then they asked me to reenact a scene where Cedric Diggory dies, and I had to, I had to just improvise with this um, actor that they they asked to come in to act alongside with me. Um, and so I did that, and I cried my eyes out. Um, and then they cast me. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. What was your reaction when you found out you had to do a kissing scene? Uh, and how many takes did you need? <laughs> oh, too many takes. <laughs> too many. Um, well, I, I think I always knew that there would be a kissing scene. So I was very nervous, um, of course, because I think... I think even before, so on the day when it happened, they tried to make it really comfortable for me and Dan because I think everybody wanted to see it because it was such a momentous occasion. But also they wanted to protect our, you know, sanity. So they closed off the set, which means that only the people who really need to be on set are allowed. So there were minimal people. So normally there's maybe like hundreds and it was maybe down to like 20, which is still quite a crowd if you're kissing somebody and you know, this number of people watching is really not very natural. Um, and you know, me and Dan were like, huh, what did you have for lunch? Have you taken, the, have you taken your mints? Did you brush your teeth? Like, you know, just trying to play it cool, but actually I think we were both just really nervous. Um, and yeah, we we did lots of takes, um, and it got a bit wet. And um, <laughs> yeah, I was very glad when it was over. And also, it was very technical. It wasn't romantic in any way because um, the director wanted us to move our heads um, at certain places and certain um, times, and it got really awkward. So yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay, final question. Uh, hello. Hi. This is Mane. Hi. And I'm Dimke. Um, we have the question, the train that you are riding to Hogwarts. A little closer to the mic, yeah. Is it, a, is it a real train that you are sitting on, or you are sitting just in a fake park? Yes, sorry, it was a fake train. It was a, so it was, we were on a cat, so it was my, um, the scene where I asked for two pumpkin pasties. I remember coming into the set thinking I was get, gonna get on like, um, you know, a full train, full train, but it was just two carriages. And it was funny, they had two men on either side of the carriage with a big piece of wood stuck into like a, a space um, on the side. And they would just like stand on this piece of wood to make it look like the train was moving. Um, that's magic. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was, um, that was interesting. I remember thinking, oh wow, this is quite archaic. This is a quite a, um, yeah, funny way of, of making the train look like it was moving. But, but it looked like it was moving, so they did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay guys, put your hands together and give a big warm Belgian welcome. Thank you.